everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me for another Distressing Canoxide colour combination video. Today we're looking at vintage photos. So this is one of the browns. Being a neutral, it, you may find it a little bit harder to incorporate into colour combinations, which is why I'm going to give you two here. Uh, we're going to be doing a toner one and one with a pop of colour as well. We're also going to be comparing it to other colours within the Distress Ink and Oxide range to see whereabouts it sits and whether there's anything so similar that you don't need to buy both or whether it really is a standalone colour. So the first thing we're going to do is swatch it onto white cardstock onto a blending mat to protect my desk. Now uh, everything I'm using is linked down below. That includes the inks, the brushes, the blending mat but it also includes the colour chart. So the colour chart is not filled in when you print it off. It's for free on my website. So you can go and download that straight away. Uh, I will have it linked in the description for you. Along with this, like I say, you fill it in at your own leisure. So with the colours you've got, and you can clearly see at a glance what colours you now have in your collection. You also have another couple of downloads available to you. So we've got the complete filled in colour chart. You print this off in colour and you have got an overview of everything on one sheet. Really handy to have on the wall in your craft room. And then we've also got labels that you can print off too. And you can put them on your brushes, on your storage, on your ink pads, wherever it may be. And they're in colour and in black and white as well. So let's swatch vintage photo first of all and see how this looks when it's on white cardstock. So I'm going to put this on the end because it's it's a nice mid brown. I think it's a warm brown, so it's got those warm tones, so it would easily lead into reds, for example. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful colour. Okay, let's bring that up a little bit higher. So our first colour combination, this is kind of the feature colour. There we go, stunning. So really nice and warm. You can see the orange tones in there as well. So when you're thinking about a vintage photo with the sepia tones, uh, this is going to work really well. Now this was actually my first ever colour in the Distress inks because I used to use it all the time for going around the edges of papers, making thing look, things look aged and old and vintage so yeah I really love this one had it many 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 years so let's just take a look and see how this compares to other browns that are in the distress range so in our color chart here we have got them all in a strip towards the back there's actually two strips with some browns on so you've got a few there so vintage photo is just here as you can see now i laminate my strips to keep them clean and free from creases and ink marks and things so that gives it a very slightly cloudy look this will dry with that uh, slight cloudy look anyway because it is an oxide um but you usually find that ink blending will be a little bit brighter than a laminated one only because i used a matte laminating pouch so this is vintage photo as you can see above it is brushed corduroy much much lighter gathered twigs is darker not as warm either almost a cooler brown so you can see there although there's quite a few i mean walnut stain is extremely dark and has almost a gray tone to it as well there's actually nothing that sits with vintage photo at all in my opinion okay so standalone so you can of course try to um, replace this with other browns if you wish but I just don't think anything would work quite as well given that it's got those lovely warm tones so let's do a tonal color combination this means going from dark to light or light to dark using that color so I'm going to go to frayed burlap burlap next um, we'd usually use uh, a tonal color blend if we're doing something like a background maybe and you only want to stick with the one color but you want to have some variation in there so these are perfect for those sorts of backgrounds so the first thing i'm going to do is lay down solid color next to the first color i put down i'm not thinking about blending just yet so i just try to fade this line out a little bit that just aids with the blending later and i did the same here once I've got my solid colour down, now I can start blending up to the line where the vintage photo is and pick up a bit more vintage photo on my brush. Pop that down solid, where it's solid in the middle there first and then start working in small circles over the join between the two colours. I'm not pushing up into it too far just yet. I'm just working gently over the two and seeing if they will just blend themselves nicely together. Now you can see where I've got more ink here, less ink here. So let's 
put some more ink down here. Yeah, that's much, much better. So you can see the darker patches are where the ink is heavier, but that's the dye part of the ink and that will dry a little more. You actually see it quite a lot with vintage photo, darker patches. So don't stress about those too much. Give that chance to dry before you think or decide whether that combination has worked. But there's those two blended together quite nicely. Lovely, I look forward to seeing that when it's dry. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe my mat and add antique linen into the end. So this is a much, much lighter color. It's a creamy color, but it works beautifully, of course, into the browns because it is a neutral, because it's a cream. So layer this onto the end. This is ideal if you want to add pops of colour on top because these colours are all neutrals. And then take frayed burlap. So that's not blended too badly on its own anyway, but I'm going to take what ink's left on my frayed burlap and just in little circles work that up into the antique linen a little before it dries too much. There we go. Gorgeous. Love those two blended together even more actually. So little bits of paper on there. That's coming, they're coming out of my brushes at the moment because I washed them and I forgot there were some paper labels on the handles. So of course I've got little bits of paper in all my bristles and they're coming off on my blending at the moment. But they do brush away once everything's dry. But those who like I say, these patches here that you can see, the darker patches, they're just wet ink so as soon as that all thoroughly dries you're going to get this lovely blend of the three colors you can see the warmth of, of I'm going to say victorian velvet then the warmth of vintage photo down the bottom there compared to the grayness as such of frayed burlap which again frayed burlap antique linen they both have their own videos with their own color combinations in too so let's pop that aside hopefully that'll be dry by the end of the video sometimes it is sometimes it isn't it really depends on how warm the room is but um if not we'll take a look anyway and see what it looks like okay another color combination so we're going to do three colours again. I'm going to start with Vintage Photo. Pop this on the end. Because it's quite a rich colour, I tend to have it on the end of my combinations. And when I say on the end, I mean as the last or the first colour, rather than between two more. There aren't many colours. Ground Espresso, maybe Black Soot I would put um, beyond this. Otherwise, this would always be on the end as one of the darkest colours. And I don't always work in this way either, in strips of colour. Sometimes I work in sort of circles going from the, usually the lightest in the middle out to the darkest on the edges or vice versa. Now for this one I'm going to go into weathered wood next and then into tumbled glass. The reason I'm going into weathered wood is because it's a grey, it's more of a neutral blue. So it helps to lead nicely into the brightness of tumbled glass. Um, and I just think neutrals together just blend much better than trying to put two strong colours together. So this one takes a little bit of work because it is such, such a pale colour. It takes a little while to um, to really work at it and build it up. We'll get there. I'll just keep going around in circles and applying more ink. In fact, I think my ink pad probably could do with being juiced up again, so re-inked. But I do have a colour combination video to film with weathered wood very soon. I don't think I'm going to get it re-inked before then. And I'm bringing that right up into, in fact, that has blended beautifully. I mean, look at that. If you're doing something like, I don't know, rusty metal, for example, on your project and you want a background, that is just stunning. I love how grungy um, and yeah, I love that. I really love that very old vintage look. And then let's just add the pop of colour to the very end with tumbled glass nice bright blue this is going to lift this beautifully I've actually left quite a bit of the cardstock there still so it'll be quite a large piece of tumble glass 
so up to that blend line I'm not going over it just yet let's make sure this is all the solid color here is where it needs to be come back with weathered wood and go over that weathered wood is one of those colors that does work nicely into almost any color because it is almost a gray so it it works so nicely because it, it's kind of got those neutral properties to it I love that I think that's really really lovely going from the dark brown into the really bright light blue I would definitely be adding some splats up there as well I think definitely um, but yeah that is a gorgeous combination um, for like I say if you want to do something like a vintage grungy effect background let's just take a look at this and as I say those those patches are still there just about they're still drying but starting to look a little clearer as well so two different combinations for you using vintage photo um, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel just up here and also check out the playlist with all those other videos just here we've nearly completed them hopefully by the end of 2023 every video will be there so thank you for joining me take care everybody and I'll see you again very soon